I live here at the old rectory in Brenzett and we moved here eight years ago and soon after we moved in we started to try and find out some of the history of the house and we discovered that it was built in 1869. We were really super eager to find out even more information then because we knew the architect, uh, we knew who had invested uh, in the house and so we wanted to find out more and we went to the Canterbury archives and um, during the time there we found the original tithe map and finding that it showed that the building actually was in a different place than this house. And we discovered that eventually the vicarage was knocked down in the 1800s for our house to be built. So that led us to start thinking, oh I wonder if uh, part of the house is still there. So we got in touch with Lucy at um, the Fifth Continent Project. We did a little bit of background research before we even did our geophysical survey and one of those things was um, looking at old maps. So we started off by looking at the old OS maps, but the earliest OS map um, was drawn at about the same time that this house was built. Um, so it just shows this house on, on the OS map. But then when we look at the tithe maps, which are older, um, we can see a red rectangle um, in the location of this garden, um, which red means it's inhabited. Um, so we have a, a, pretty, a pretty good idea that that's the building that we're looking for. So that shows us uh, where to look. Then we overlay that map on modern OS maps and that um, helps us narrow down where to go. So today we're doing an excavation um, in its entirety. So we're starting off by plotting out a grid, which shows us um, we can match that up to the survey that we did before, so we know where to target. Then we're starting off by doing some test pits. So they are one metre square pits, uh, which we deturf and then we excavate with hand tools, so with a, a trowel, archaeological trowel, um, uh, down in layer, keeping all the finds that, from each layer together. And so we'll do that, and then hopefully we will come across um, some of the, the, build, the building remains, in which case we will open up some larger areas which are called trenches and continue excavating that way. So once excavated our material, we then have to process everything we find. And the, we're actually starting that on site today. So the first thing we will do is we will wash our finds. Um, so wash, wash the dirt off so we can actually see what we're looking at. Then everything has to be allowed to dry naturally. Um, and, but once it's dry, we then start the process of uh, sorting it, marking it up, which means writing the site code on every single piece, um, dividing it into categories so that we can then analyze it um, and send it off to specialists to be dated. When you come on a, an archaeological dig, you come with a very open mind. And uh, whether you find anything or not um, isn't really the point. Um, the fact that you found nothing is as valuable as finding some precious object or less than precious object. And the day-to-day -day is perhaps much more interesting in telling you about local life on a, on a very basic and ordinary level rather than finding some special object that tells you about the extreme or the life on a, on a high level. Uh, one of the things that's been really nice about the last couple of days um, is the range of people that have come and volunteered their time with us. So we've got uh, about 20 people on site today and we've had about 20 people each day so far. I've always been interested in archaeology and when I saw an advert last year actually for the Fifth Continent Project I applied and I've been helping out ever since. I think it's really important for people to um, be interested in their local area to, to not just what's around them at the time, what's currently happening, but to look at what's happened in the past to understand how people lived how people um, manage their environment so that we can keep it alive for ourselves and for future generations because I think you know it's, it's very important to understand heritage and to maintain it and to look after it. Uh, so we've had a few um, exciting developments over the last few days. We have opened up a number of test pits now um, and I think it's three of them that are showing that we have got signs of possible structure so we don't know if it's a wall or foundations or some sort of um, something like that it's it's really it's quite unusual because it's it's made up of lots of different things like bits of tile bits of mortar bits of stone that sort of thing 
but we've been following that through, so we're quite excited to see where that goes and see if we can pick it up in any of the other test pits uh, around the site. Um, we've also had a number of uh, interesting finds of, of an earlier date, so we've got a few medieval finds coming out now, so we've got um, a fair few bits of medieval pottery coming out, which is really exciting, and we've got some medieval bricks. The, uh, the trench that we started yesterday, um, and we thought we'd finished it yesterday actually, and we've come back to this morning and it had rained overnight, and the rain has shown up a nice contrast of colour in the section, so it looks like a feature. So we decided to investigate that further, even though it was the last day, we know we need to wrap everything up today. We decided to investigate it further and it's paid off because um, at the bottom of that uh, trench there are, there are building material coming through, so it looks like we've got what could be the left foundations of the building. Um, so this is our last dig of the summer, but it's obviously not our last dig of the project. Um, they've got plenty more activities coming up, so we're always looking for more volunteers to come and get involved um, and see what we're up to. If you want to find out more, you can go to our website or you can check out our Facebook and Twitter page, which is The Fifth Continent.